Welcome to the and Truth, where most topics are worth discussing, and I'm the master of none, but I'm a realist. I'm your host, Chris Hurst, a.k.a. C.H., a.k.a. The Truth. Now, these are my views and opinions, so don't sue me. So now, let's go. What's good, people? How's everybody doing? This is Chris Hurst for the and Truth. Before we get started, you can follow me on Instagram, at and Truth. Or you can follow me on my YouTube page, which is Chris Hurst Production, all one word. Chris H U R S T Production, all one word. Or you can see these videos on my YouTube. I'm, I'm sorry, on my Facebook page, which is the F and Truth Podcast. Now, we got that out the way. Today, I have a guest. Her name is Carolyn Wilson, and today she's here to tell us about her story. She's an author. She recently did a film, a documentary called The Good Life. And we're gonna get into that and talk about The Good Life. But first, uh, Carolyn, tell us about who you are. I always have to be prepared for this and I never <laughs> know what to say. <laughs> it's like, I know it's coming. It's like, get ready, jump in double dutch. It's coming, right, it's coming. Right. So I'm Carolyn Wilson. Um, like you said, I'm an author. Um, filmmaker now first time filmmaker congratulations thank you so much yay never thought um woman of god uh and that's pretty much me and i magnified yeah it's the best way to describe me okay yeah <laughs> okay where are you from born and raised philadelphia okay not west philly though west philly no. Oh, not West Philly. Not West okay. Philly. <laughs> Had a stint in there, but yeah, I got no, you. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. got you. What part of Philly? Yeah, I might have been born in West Philly. No, but um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. No one told me anything. No, but um, uptown. Uptown. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm from uptown. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I didn't know that was uptown until yeah, somebody yeah, yeah. told me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. I was in New York. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> you uptown. I'm like, you yeah. Uptown. I'm like, what you talking yeah. about? It's just downtown. Yeah. So yeah. like, like it's downtown, North right. Philly, South Philly, West right. Philly. Right. That's it. Right. That's where we're at. Yeah. <laughs> well, for those who don't know, Uptown <laughs> is considered like the Mount Airy area where I'm from. Shout out to my Mount Airy people. So that's Uptown. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but you're from East Oak Lane, is it? Uh, yeah, Northwest section of the city. East Oak Lane, West Oak Lane, Oak Lane, somewhere up in that little corner. I got you. Yeah. I got you. Okay. The boundaries are kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Up there. Got you. Got you. <laughs> now, what high school did you attend? I went to, John, we had this conversation before, John W. Hollihan, Catholic okay. High School for Girls. Okay. okay. No comment. Okay, yeah, we're going to leave it at that. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's Catholic. Like, it's, I'm, I'm a public school guy, so I yeah. can't, you know, I can't. Can't relate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't it's relate. I'm a Catholic school girl. Yeah. Can't, can't, can't relate. You know, I'm Central 247. So, you know. Um, so. No, nothing about that. <laughs> yeah. People but it was all Central. boys when you went? No, actually, it was the second year where females came in. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Was, it was the second year. Because girls run the world. Ah. <laughs> We infiltrated the whole boys' school. Yes. yes, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> yes. So you were there. You said the I, second year you were there. So your yeah, sophomore year. My my freshman year. So the, oh okay. Yeah. So the second the second year was was my freshman year. Oh, so yeah. you so never had a chance in, to experience as a single sex school, all boys' no, school. You never had that all. experience. Not at all. So when I got there, I started in 1984. Okay. So when I got there in 84, the first class of females was 1983. Okay. So when I got there, that was their second year. That was their second year. Right. Wow. Right. Dang, I remember when it happened. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it was a big deal. Yeah, it was a big, yeah. big, big, big. I definitely remember when it happened. It was a big deal. I don't know who's the first woman that... that did it, but shout out to you, whoever you are. <laughs> I know, girl power. Girl, girl power. So that's Even getting... back then, in 1884. I know. How about that? My How about Adidas. that? Right, right, <laughs> right. There you go. So now, let's talk about your documentary, The Good, Good Life. Life. Yes. So, give us a, a synopsis on what The Good Life is about. I remember, I'm a first-time filmmaker. I gotta get used to this. I understand. So, um, it's basically, it's about wanting to make a change, 
But in order to make a change, you need to make a choice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everyone has a, a moment in their life, you know, like a defining moment right. in their life that things, they can make a decision based on that defining moment and it can change the directory of their life and which way they go. Okay. So that's pretty much what this film is about because for me, there was a defining moment. Okay. There was a definitely a, a defining moment that kind of made me have to make a choice. Okay. Now, what was that defining moment? The defining moment was, uh, I'm a survivor of sexual child abuse. Okay. So that was something that was, that I pretty much lived with and you bury it. You know, like a lot of people have different types of trauma. Right. They could have had an alcoholic parent, right? They could have been in foster care. They could have, you know, so you just fill in the blank with whatever different narrative. They may have even been homeless. You don't know what people go through in their life. Like Understood. everybody has a story. Absolutely. Point blank. Everybody does. Absolutely. N no, nobody's story less. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I agree. Because if, if they think they are, they're only, they only got their representative and they're not being true to themselves. <laughs> I agree. So, everybody has a story. So, when you figure out exactly what your narrative is, right, or the one that was given to you, um, a lot of times we have a tendency to bury it because we're ashamed, we're embarrassed, and or we're in denial, and we just don't want to deal with it. Understood. Right? So, it just kind of goes away. And we go on with our life, and then right. we wonder why things are just kind of out of whack. Right, right. <laughs> because we're lugging this stuff. Right. You know, or it keeps popping up and poking you in the foot. You know, it just right. keeps, it keeps like jabbing right. at right. you, it keeps right. coming right. up. Right. And you keep pushing it away and it right. keeps popping up and you right. keep pushing it away. So we make those choices to ignore it, <laughs> right? We make a choice. You're right. We make a choice to do nothing. It's like, hmm, okay. See, but then eventually you have to get to a point, at least I hope people do, get to a point where they make that choice to make a change so that way that no longer can continue to keep poking them and keep popping up and keep throwing them off guard, right? right? So yeah, that was, I don't know what we're talking about, but yeah, that has something <laughs> to do with it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so who was the person that sexually abused you? My father, my biological father. Okay. Yeah. How old were you? You know, I couldn't even tell you. I don't know. As far as I can remember, um, until, so far as I can remember, so I can remember at least three, being three. So I may have been a baby, don't know. But um, up until I was about 14. Wow. Yeah. So all my formative years, okay. that's all I know. Was your mother and father together during that time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were. Your biological mother? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. My mom and dad, they were married. Yep. Okay. During that, and I know that you were a child, but during that time, did you know that something wasn't right? Not until I was a teenager. Okay. Yeah, not until I was a teenager. But when I was younger, that was right. I don't know. I was just, right. You know, right. <laughs> right. I understand. Yeah. I understand. Now, when you became a teenager, who was the first person that you reached out to? <laughs> it wasn't until. I became like, it, the abuse had already stopped. Um, and it was just something that was just still kind of there. And I just never talked about it. Never talked about it. Um, I didn't talk, I didn't bring it up until I was 17. Okay. Um, yes, <laughs> kind of interesting. I remember even watching, remember the after school special, the ABC after school special? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember those? Yes, yes, I do. After yes, school do. specials. I remember sitting down watching the after school special with my grandmother um when they were and one of the episodes was about child molestation oh, wow. and i remember sitting there going ah, feeling so uncomfortable and my grandma was like oh wow you know we're just because it's like watching lifetime you know right. it's the modern day well the back in the day version of lifetime and you know and i just remember having to um just pretend that i didn't know what this was and but it was me, it was me all day, every day. And I just could not get it to say anything. I just pretended that because I was already used to just kind of putting it to the side and ignoring it. And even if it came to me, it was just, cause I had plenty of opportunity to say something, but it just, something I just didn't want to talk about. I didn't want to deal with it. I'm so sorry. I didn't, I didn't deal with it, but it didn't come out until I was about 17. Okay. And it was, um, 
I just kind of talked to my boyfriend about it at the time. And he was like, you need to say something. And I'm like, yeah, I guess. So then I went and told, I told my grandmother. And, and then the rest is from there. And then we went and reported it. She was like, do you want to call the police? Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. So I was 17. Now your grandmother, was it his mother or? No, my mother's mother. Your mother's yeah. mother? Okay. Yeah, my mother's mother. So, nice. but I went to my grandmother then told her okay. and then we told my mom together but I, I went to my grandmother okay and how did your mother react to it um she was you know you kind of hear this and it's 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 typical she was in shock she was kind of in denial okay. um and she just kind of didn't really know how to deal with it mm -hmm. at the time were they still together like they were, by that time, they were together, together apart. Okay. 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 <laughs> you know, like, they, he wasn't in the house any longer, because um, we were living with my grandmother. Okay. So, when he was, wherever he was, doing whatever he was doing. Okay. And then, it was kind of like, she needed him to take him to the, you know, because she never, she didn't drive. Okay. So, she was fully dependent upon him, even though he wasn't in the house any longer. Okay. okay. So, it was like, listen, it was, it was like a together, together apart type. I don't know what their situation was. Understood. Yeah. Understood. <laughs> I understand. Yeah, he was just a father from afar. Okay. Now, are you the only child? Yes. Okay. Yeah, well. Is that another story? Yeah, yeah <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> you, you care to share or? Well, that's, they would have to, you know, they have to watch The Good Life to find out. Ah, uh, understood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a plug. It's a plug. You got to watch The Good Life to find life. out that part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Can't give up everything. I understand, I understand. <laughs> So, when you lived in a house with your mother and father, mm -hmm. I mean, besides the, the molestation mm -hmm. and things like that, how was your father as a, as a man, as a father? How was he? I, I mean, we did father-daughter stuff, mm -hmm. like, you know, um, going to the park and... Um, singing goofy songs and reading but you know like right. um going to go look at you know animals at the at the fish store you know at the pet right. store you know just stuff father, daughter, yeah father, father daughter stuff kind of i guess okay um but then there was also times where he, you know that i also saw him being really um just like rude and ignorant really like to his mother oh <laughs> yeah to his mother okay. to you know not sometimes to my mother um but i just would always see i saw a different side to him you know kind of just make you just kind of retreat yeah i just i would see sides to him that would make you want to retreat understood yeah do you think that something happened to him in his past you know I, you never know probably Probably he was dealing. He's probably dealing with something, or had to deal with something. Um, I don't know. That's above my pay grade to figure that out. <laughs> I, I understand. I, I, yeah, I I have no idea. But something. There's some kind of disconnect for him. Um, what would cause him to want to, um, you know, basically have sex with your own daughter, right? right. <laughs> right? Um, there's some kind of there's a disconnect there right there's a disconnect there there's no love for or respect because i saw it not for his mother you know not for my mother right um or any woman my grandmother you know my great-grandmother and then even me mm -hmm. so yeah so where was his father my grandfather was around and he he argued with his grandfather with his my right. grandfather yeah, so he was just, he was just, yeah, now I think about it, like he, he was just always angry okay. <laughs> and okay. upset and mad, but okay. just deal with it. <laughs> okay. I mean, he's a, he's a, pro I don't, only thing that I can think of, I can put it, he's a product of um, a biracial situation. So from the story that I've heard and um, that he's always had this identity crisis not knowing who he was and people not knowing who he is and you know the blacks don't accept him the whites don't accept him the you know it just this question mark so i guess if you're not giving him an excuse but you know and then i heard some other stories about how my 
my grandfather met my grandmother over in Germany. So he's a war, you know, that uh -huh. American war kind of okay. situation going on over there. And from what I understand, because he didn't come to the States until he was 13. Okay. So, but my grandfather was back and forth. Okay. Because of, you know, being in the service. So, and then I think he went there and he stayed for a while because it was like, um, populate Germany or something, something that America did with Germany. Okay. And, um... So from what I so he may have had some dad, my, I, he may have mommy daddy issue. I don't know. Okay. 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 <laughs> Once again, it's right. above my pay grade. All right. <laughs>